now, Rob, if you're ready, let's cue up the next song. Just like that. Gotta recognize the thieves in their tracks. Who's crying on wool? We gotta separate the lies from the facts. The truth is calling our names loud and clear, but we're running with the pack that's turned to death fear. We have got to learn who's crying on wool. Think first, and the rest will come. And what do I see? Elected officials in a broken governmental machine Assuring all the masses they are building this American dream Or spending all the time debating the latest tweet Your tax dollars at work I turn the next channel See a smile so bright Spreading the gospel That everything's alright Keep sending me your money Market 501c3 A deduction for you And zero taxes for me Hallelujah Tell me all your crying bulls You gotta recognize the thieves in their tracks Tell me all your crying wolves We gotta separate the lies from the facts The truth is calling our names Indie Music Live, episode 160 freaking 3 I'm JoJo Keys uh, Hope you like TJ Leonard uh, It seems like a nice guy I didn't actually get to meet him Because I was uh, busy for the, the pre-recorded interview But uh, Dave, what, do you, what are your thoughts on uh, Well, I mean... Uh, with that you saw his studio right there I, I think he just gets an amazing sound you know out of that place like uh you know whether whether you're into that type of music or not I, you got to appreciate the quality yeah yeah that's yeah, yeah. it definitely sticks out so so the other tune was uh cry wolf by bill abernathy uh both those guys are actually mts management guys uh they send us the majority of the country music that we review uh as of now um and, you know, we're not really country guys. I grew up in Indiana, and I had a bunch of buddies that loved country, and I got into, you know, some Garth Brooks and some uh, some of those guys. And, you know, it was it's good music. I always say that some of the best musicians are country musicians, um, you know, because a lot of those guys can play a lot of different genres too. Um, as far as, like, uh, Cry Wolf goes, you can read my review I did on the website. Uh, the guitar playing is is great. I think the song itself is a little dated sounding. Um, not really top choice for me. Um, Nadira, does it make you do this? <laughs> That's a different, <laughs> no. Different type um, of <laughs> I also am not wearing pants, so I can't stand no. up. <laughs> no. No. Um, I, I do agree. It sounds a little dated. Um, it sounds like maybe it's something that he just like wanted to do but i think that um it's probably super great live it's probably like a real hype song live so i'd be interested to see like what it was like live but i think um it's okay it's okay i didn't, i wasn't crazy about the mix um it was it was okay to me the vocals were pretty good the vocals were pretty good i think the uh, when I say that, let me clarify. When I say the vocals were pretty good, meaning that he didn't go outside of his comfort zone unnecessarily for this song. You know, a lot of times people just want to, you know, I want to drive it home. And, you know, they get too excited and they take it somewhere and it doesn't need to go. And he played it safe where he was supposed to. And uh, I think his message came I mean, we, we've gotten a lot of music Before, like this, so. though, Nadira. It's like a lot has passed through where um, the artist is writing in a style or an era that they that they're comfortable with and that where they want to be. 
you know, so it may sound day to day. Yeah, I think it does sound dated, but it's dated to like, you know, Dan Fogelberg, that's who you mentioned, Joe, in the review. And I, I heard some dire straits, some Mark Knopfler uh, influence in this. And uh-huh. when I say dated, I don't mean like it sounds, uh, it, the, the sound quality is actually pretty good, but I think it's, it almost sounds like it was recorded on older equipment too, which is fine because a lot of people like to record on older equipment. You know, I think one of the things I mentioned was this kind of the splashy symbols possibly, if that was that review, I'm not really sure, but it sounds like it was recorded mm. Maybe the tape was a little distorted or something like that. I heard that too. Yeah. I wanted to hear like a sharper snare cutting through for sure. Maybe like a warmer low end, like crank the bass up a touch. But, but on the dated conversation, it's like, you know, it's like Ben Cody comes to mind. It's like, yeah, he's, his sound is mid eighties. It's a different uh, kind of dated sound though. It's like the, the quality of the recording is better, but it's it's the date down because that's what he's trying to do you know but yeah but so ben cody like the music he makes it's it it sounds like mid 80s style like hair metal you know hard rock but it's his fresh take on it you know mm-hmm. so this is this is uh <clears throat> that's why bill? i said yeah, that, this is bill's why, take on that era so, sorry go ahead yeah no i was saying that's why i think that it would probably be crazy good live because it just sounds like there's a lot of enthusiasm for his lyrics more so than the um, recording and the quality and all that. It seems like his focus was to get his message out, which I can appreciate because, you know, I love, I'm I'm all about telling the story. And um, his lyrics, it sounds like he's very, very passionate about his lyrics. And I enjoy someone who is very passionate about what they do. So dated sounding or not, you know, I, I that's what I enjoyed about this is that he really paid you can hear his passion, you know, and he and he didn't go where he didn't need to go with it. 